الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم اللهم كن وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توغا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم We are going to talk about two things today about the etiquettes on eating and on sleeping what are we allowed to eat and how do we sleep and both of them they are important now just a recap of what was mentioned yesterday about the cleaning and the making ta tahir and pure something that has been made najis uh, now if something a vessel which you use in your cooking in your eating and drinking it got nudges for example a drop of blood from my hand it cut it fell in that glass I just wash it as normal and it's clean but then if I've got a vessel and a dog came and licked that vessel or a, the saliva of the dog dropped in that dripped in that vessel or a pig licked it or the saliva of the pig dripped in that vessel so the rules over here they are different for a dog there you have to take some dirt mix it with water and rub that vessel nicely and then rinse it three times after it has been rubbed with dirt and for a pig you, you don't need dirt but some of the ulama they say it's good to rub it with dirt first and then you rinse it seven times so for the pig you have to wash it seven times for the dog you have to ru uh, rub it with dirt first and then rinse it with water three times that is the rule that we have for uh, if it was a vessel which was a bottleneck or something long in which you cannot put your hand in there you use a stick and then you put some cloth on it and you rub it nicely with dirt and then you rinse it with water three times and for the pig seven times and for regular najasat you just wash it and rinse it and the actual najasat be removed you washed it twice that's going to be fine now that was a recap on yesterday when we recite Quran we see that there are so many ayat that say that Allah has made everything for you and from whatever he has made on this earth it is for you to eat for example he has an ayah says ya ayyuhannas kulu mimma fil ard ya ayyuhannas means O oh people Kulu in Arabic means eat. Then says Mimma fil ard, what is on the earth? So eat from what is on the earth. So what do I eat? Anything? Everything? Then he says Halalan Tayyiban. That what is halal and that what is pure. So it's two things over here halal and pure. So certain things are halal, but then certain things may not be pure. So then you can't eat some that what is not pure. Something that is not halal also, you cannot eat. Insects, for example, insects, they are not najis, but you cannot eat them. Then you've got, in what you eat and what you don't eat, we've got all rules. I'll, I'll mention them slowly and step by step and you get an idea. And you have any questions, just keep them in your mind. At the end of the session, you can ask them. So first it has to be clean and it has to be halal. Then he says that Wala tattabi'u khutuwat shaitan innahu lakum aduwwam mubeen and don't follow the footsteps of shaitan because shaitan is the known enemy of yours. Shaitan is your known enemy so you don't follow shaitan. Shaitan will come across in your life and he will bring up all these different issues and present them before you in a beautiful way for you to have it like for example shaitan he will never come and ask you to have a pork sandwich he will never come and ask you to have a glass of wine or liquor slowly he will get into the system he will come into the system by for example gelatine saying that gelatine that's fine you can have it because you don't know so you don't have it that's a footstep of shaitan slowly he wants to get into our system so he slowly comes with little things and when you get used to those little things 
then those big things also become easier to consume so that haram also becomes easier to be, uh, to do it so for that reason allah says you don't follow the footsteps of shaitan you don't follow shaitan totally even in that little area you don't follow shaitan now quran says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum from the halal that we have from the good that we have given you you eat and then he says you thank him after you've eaten so you allah has blessed you with all those blessings and after that you thank him you say alhamdulillah now he's made some things unlawful among the things that he has made haram forbidden says it's first of all in this one ayah in quran says innama harrama alaykum al-mayta allah has made haram for you corpse corpse mean anything that you see is dead you can't eat it even if it's a goat or a lamb or a chicken you see it's dead you can't eat or for example says blood you cannot eat pig you cannot eat or anything that has been killed not in the way of god you cannot eat so clearly he has mentioned so what can we eat anything that is halal anything that is pure anything that has been slaughtered in the way of allah and how it is slaughtered i'll give you uh, the details so you can have that in your mind so when you are within the within the rules that allah has laid some things halal some things haram you have to move within those rules then you are safe the moment we trespass and get out of that format that allah has laid that is when we get into the traps of shaitan and someone who gets into the traps of shaitan then he gets him dragged towards himself and slowly he and after a while he sees that he is lost so much so allah the almighty he says that when you want to eat an animal that is halal for example from the halal animals you've got goats you've got lamb you've got camels you've got cows so all these are halal animals chicken duck so all these are halal so for an animal to be halal that uh, you have to be you have to slaughter it in the way of halal and that is you have to face the animal towards the qibla and the person who is killing and slaughtering that animal has to be a muslim and then he says bismillah or allahu akbar when he is slaughtering the animal now the animal and also he is using a sharp knife it shouldn't be something that you are hurting the animal and then killing the animal that will make it haram it has to be with a sharp knife muslim slaughtering it animal facing the qibla and also you have to say mention the name of the almighty allah that is bismillah allahu akbar subhanallah whatever you say that will make that animal halal and after you've killed the animal it should it should show some signs of movement that it should flap a little bit if it's a bird or if it's an animal it moves its legs and mouth and eyes so that shows that it was alive so it has to be alive in the first case so that is how you make an animal halal now once you've uh, if you are going on a hunting and you want to uh, kill an animal or hunt an animal so again the same criteria is that the animal has to be halal you can't go and hunt a dog and make it halal no you can't do that you have to if you are going hunting it has to be a halal animal like a wild deer like a cow or like a, a, a camel or oh, what are these animals that are halal to eat so here how what you do is that you have to have an uh, a tool a weapon that is sharp if it's a sword or a dagger it has to be sharp or a rifle or a bullet or a gun you're using and then you uh, sighted the animal you say bismillah and you shoot at the animal if the animal dies there it becomes halal if it doesn't die you get, go to the animal and then you pick it and then you slaughter it in the way of halal so if it uh, if you shoot at the animal and it dies it is halal sometimes people they trap an animal and then they go and hit it with a stone or with a, with uh, some kind of a stick or wood that is haram to eat and that will make the animal haram you cannot do that so you have to slaughter the animal properly 
or if it's hunting you have to hunt the animal properly and even after hunting if the animal did not die you have to slaughter that animal and only then it will be halal this is regarding animals that we are allowed to eat from the seafood only two things we are allowed to eat one any fish that has scales on it and secondly it is shrimp or megu in farsi or in urdu they call it jinga so only these two sea creatures are allowed any fish that has scales on it now these animals yeah you can have your questions you can ask them later please write them down somewhere safe uh, so these two animals that have uh, from the sea creatures only fish that have scales on it and shrimp nothing else so these scales also it could be tiny it could be big it could be at some point a point in their life for example when the fish was uh, young it had scales it grew older the f scales it dropped they dropped or the fish had scales when it was caught the f the scales they dropped so all of these fish they are halal so it has to have scales any point during their life uh, of the fish so any fish that has scales any size of scales all of them they are halal for the fish it has to die out of water or it dies in the net in the net that you have collected all the fish and it died in the net so these fish that you have uh, you that you have um, they've taken out of water or they are within the net and if they die within the net they are halal this is the ruling that we have from the most of the leading ulama today so uh, shrimp and a fish that has uh, that has scales on it now the eggs eggs of all halal animals they are halal to eat eggs of chicken of ducks of uh, uh, of partridges for example or uh, these are halal birds you can have their uh, eggs as well eggs of birds that are haram to eat are forbidden to eat we are not allowed to eat sometimes you slaughter a chicken and then you find an egg in the in the chicken now this egg is completely formed if it has a shell on it you can eat if it doesn't have a shell on it it hasn't been formed completely you cannot eat likewise the fish it has eggs eggs of all halal fish are halal to eat now this is regarding the animals and the birds and also some of the sea creatures that we are allowed to eat now from these halal animals also there are certain things they are forbidden haram to eat i'll just there are 14 of them i'll just mention the ones which we generally come across and we we should know about them first of all blood of all animals it is haram to eat you cannot say that i've slaughtered this animal i want to collect all the blood and make an obgusht of blood that's haram you can't eat blood blood it's not allowed to eat you don't eat blood the private parts of the animals haram to eat and then there is a marrow in the spinal cord that is also not allowed we are not allowed to eat now if you uh, from the animals like for example uh, cows and camels and goats and lambs if they've made something from the with the head of that animal and it's got eyes in it so from the eyes the black part of the eye of the animal it is forbidden we are not allowed to eat the black part the pupil of the eye so keep that in your mind so the black part of the eye it is forbidden to eat so uh, the blood the private parts the black part of the eye and the the marrow which is in the spine that is all forbidden to eat not not allowed now from the drinks you we all know that wine it is hala, haram to eat we are not permitted to uh, have any kind of an alcohol little or a lot or anything that intoxicates anything that makes us drunk and lose our memory and mind all that is haram to eat so these were some of the rules about eating hunting and what animals are allowed to eat now when you want to eat something there is also there are uh, etiquettes and adab most of them you all know just a recap and that is first of all you wash your hands before having a meal 
even if you're eating with a spoon doesn't matter you have to wash your hands first that is mustahab you wash both your hands and then after you wash your hands when you uh, you want to uh, eat you say bismillahir rahmanir rahim and you start your meal you eat slowly now one of the etiquettes that we have for eating is that you take your time don't rush and also allah he says that the amount of time you spend on eating that is not going to be counted from your life so whatever time i spend on the table uh, it will not be counted as uh, the time spent or wasted so that will not be a waste so anything else i do with my time it will be measured it will be counted it will be calculated and i have to give a reply to the almighty god why did i waste that time and why did i not use it properly but for eating on the table he says doesn't matter you can take your time eat slowly gently wash your hands say bismillah and eat with your right hand some people they are lefties so if they cannot then it doesn't matter so if they are lefties then they use their left hand but uh, mustahab to eat food with the right hand now when you're eating food it is mustahab you sit facing the qibla that is also another mustahab if you can uh, have your chair or on the sofa wherever you sit sit facing the qibla now if there are many people eating with you on the same table then you offer uh, food to every one of them and then you take if it's your parents sitting on the table and your mother is also there you don't t- pick the best part of the food for yourself imam sajjad alaihi salam his mother she had passed away when he was born now the the, the lady uh, she he had a stepmother now who had raised her raised him now when she was on the table and when he had his meal he never took the food first he waited for that mother for the mother who who had nursed him and taken care of him for him to pick the food first and then he used to take food from the table although he is the imam although he is infallible masum but that is how much of a respect he used to give to the mother who has who, who has looked after him who has raised him so that is the adab so you take care of, look into uh, everyone who is on the table see everyone has food and don't look into the plates of other people when you are eating look into your own plate look into your own food and then have small portions of uh, food don't have big big portions small portions eat them chew them and then swallow them now and uh, there are some meals and if you are eating them with other people you have to observe the hygiene as well for example if you are eating a date now the, or you are having grapes all these foods they have seed so you take the seeds out such that people they don't get disturbed when you are taking the seed out of your mouth so take it out in a way that they don't see it and put it down under the plate somewhere that people they don't hate to see what you are doing if it's fish and there are bones in it also that also take it out very delicately so that uh, you don't play with your mouth and your teeth and your gums uh, whilst you are eating so all these are little tips and etiquettes that uh, islam has given when you are uh, eating when you're having your meal now one of the other etiquettes and adab that we have the prophet has said that if you want to be safe and healthy and for your well being start your food with a little bit of a salt taste your food just a little bit of a salt taste it before you have your meal and once you've eaten your food completed eaten then again you have a little bit of a salt that is mustahab recommended and here the prophet says that someone who has this little bit of salt before and after his meal he will be protected and safe from so many diseases hadith says from 70 different kinds of diseases he will be safe while when you want to eat fruit the adab the etiquette is that you wash the fruit before eating it and also if you are if you have a guest and uh, you have invited someone to your to your to your home to have a meal for iftar for example here what you do is that first you eat you start eating first and then so that they all know that you have started eating generally what we do is that when we invite someone we are we ask them to be please please you start you eat once the adab is that you as the host have to eat first 
and then the guests start eating after you. If you put some bread on the table and then there are other things also they are that are coming on the table, here you don't wait uh, for the other food to come. As soon as you see that there is uh, bread on the table, you have that bread first. So bread has special request, uh, respect and you have to observe the other when there is bread on the table. So all these are little things that we have in Islam that uh, you have to observe. Now if a person is full, he has already had a heavy meal. So eating a lot is makru, is not liked, is, uh, is, not reg uh, is hated, is disliked. So eating a lot. Now so when someone eats a lot, he sleeps a lot. When he sleeps a lot, he wakes up, he wants to talk and talk and laugh a lot. So all these are three acts that Allah doesn't like. Eating a lot, sleeping a lot, laughing a lot. So when you don't eat a lot, you won't sleep a lot and you won't laugh a lot. So that is something we also have to keep. Uh, and also when there is food on the table, you don't blow in the food. Sometimes when there is soup or there is, uh, is, you start blowing <laughs> to make it cold. That is also makruh, not la uh, it's a dislike that you blow on the food. Just let the food cool down all by itself. The Prophet, he says that Allah wants to feed you. He doesn't want to feed you fire. So if it's hot, wait, let it cool down. And once it cools down, then you eat. Now sometimes you've seen in some places, in some homes, they put bread and they put something on the bread as well. That is also not allowed. Bread is respectful. You place the bread on the table and you don't put anything on, that, on the bread. You don't put a plate and a plate of sabzi or something else on the bread. So bread has to be set, has to sit aside all by itself with nothing on it. If you want to cover it to keep it warm, that's fine. But don't put any plate, any dishes, any bowls, any spoons on the bread. That is dislike, that is makru. Now all these are little things that we have that Allah Taala has mentioned in Quran and also in the riwayat and ahadith of Masumin alayhim salam. Now when drinking water, there are some etiquettes when you are drinking water, you drink water slowly in three sips and once you say Bismillah before that and once you've had your water you say Salam bar Hussein la'nat bar Yazid that is Salam be upon Imam Hussein alayhi salam and curses be upon the killers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And also when you're drinking water, you don't just gobble it and you just uh, uh, dump it in your throat. You have to suck it slowly and then you drink that water. So that is the adab that you have when you're drinking water. So you don't drink a lot of water. If you have had a very heavy meal, after that heavy meal, you don't eat, you don't have a lot of water, you don't drink a lot of water. So these are also some of the adab that we have after having a fatty food don't drink water or to drink water whilst you are standing at night that is also makru at night when you want to drink water sit down sit on a chair or sit on the floor and then you take your water because here the hadith says if you want to be safe from falling into the traps of uh, in, uh, insanity and all that get, let's say you have to drink water whilst you are sitting during the day you stand and drink water at night you sit and drink water these are some of the etiquettes that we have on eating and on drinking wa subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ajjil farajahum